Hey everybody, it's Aaron here with Robert and welcome to Get Your Geek On. And today is a special video we are doing. We are interviewing Colin Bressler uh, with his new movie, No Promised Land. So thank you, first of all, for coming and joining us. And oh, thank you, know, you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. You know, how's your day going so far, man? I know Christmas just happened and, you know, everyone's kind of, we were just talking about it on camera. It's, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, everything's good. Everybody's safe and healthy. That's all that matters. But been been going really well thus far. That's good. That's good. So you have a new movie coming out. Uh, so I first want to kind of, before we go into the movie itself, I just want to ask like a quick couple of quick questions. Uh, first, of course, you know, what got you into doing film work in the first place? Oh, man. I mean, when I was um, my parents are really, really huge cinephiles. They love movies. Um, and so growing up, I just I watched movies with them, all kinds of movies, old, really older, much older movies to contemporary movies, this being the 80s. Um, and I grew up in the 80s. Um, and so and then I just um, I don't know, I, I kind of just was I fell in love with it as a thing. I just I I, I always marveled at like shots and how music and I felt I, I, I kind of I guess I analyzed my own feelings. I was like, oh, wow, this makes me feel a certain way or whatever. And I used to when I was little, I used to like watching shots from movies over and over again mm -hmm. or sequences. So um, those are kind of the early days. And then I just, um, you know, when I went to, you know, in high school, I, I you know, they I was asked sort of like, what do you want to do? And, you know, I think it's like sophomore year, junior year. And I I kind of. Um, yeah, I researched and I was like, I think I want to, you know, I want to do, do movies, you know, something in movies. At that point, I was like only directing. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just fell in love with it. That's really cool. I, you know, I'm something of a cinephile myself where I, I try to be, you know, watch a lot of old movies and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm interested, you know, as you're growing up in the 80s and you were seeing all these movies, what what was like your favorite genre to, to watch? I mean, you said you kind of watch everything, but do you have like a specific one that you go like, that's my favorite genre that I, I just feel like it, it I draw so much inspiration from it? Well, growing up, I mean, I definitely as a kid, I loved sort of like action-y, you know, sci-fi type stuff, um, uh, fantasy stuff, you know, like that, um, you know, when I was a kid. Um, and I'm, you know, like, I'm, like I said, I'm from the eighties. So like, I love those classic eighties films that probably every other person in, you know, <laughs> in my generation loves like the Goonies and things like that. Um, obviously like the early star Wars and, um, you know, Indiana Jones and movies like that. I remember getting so amped to see in the theater. Um, so yeah, I mean, those kind of things like fantasy and sci-fi and, things like that. I didn't want to go near horror movies, which is funny because I make a lot of horror movies now. <laughs> um, but back then I was scared of them and I didn't like watching them. But my mother is loves, loves, loves horror movies. So growing up, I was exposed to a lot of famous horror movies that, you know, freaked me out. But I, you know, the funny thing is that even though I was, I'm scared of them, I, um, I have such a respect for the art of them because um it's all about the visuals mm -hmm. and the story and you could take your time with it and whereas other genres sort of ask you to sort of like all right come on get to the joke if it's a comedy or get to get to the plot if it's a drama or a sci-fi or something you know but horror you could take your time because you're trying to scare people and sometimes as you know like if you're walking around mm -hmm. your house and you can't see anything it takes time for you to get to the light switch you know things like that In innately horror takes time it really does. And I love you, you said that because we just did a couple months ago a whole horror thing because Robert isn't a big horror fan either. So we watch a bunch of classic horror films and some held up and some were like, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, nah, I'm done with these. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I think what was the what was the first we watched? I can't remember. Oh, uh, The Exorcist. Like, Exorcist. Oh, yeah. My oh gosh. Yeah. 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 Which which is one that takes its time. It's you know, there's a lot of. I think, you know, the word that's, that was coming to mind as you were describing that was anticipation, right? Like sometimes the, the build up to the scare is really what makes the movie. Um, you know, it only needs to have a, two or three really good moments, but if it's everything in between those moments can really get you, um, which, which I think is true. And, and, you mm -hmm. know, 
I think we'll probably, you know, get into talking about your film, No Promised Land, um, which, which, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to to watch. Yes. Um, and that was something that stood out as well is that, you know, there's not a lot of dialogue in this film. It's a lot of um, atmospheric, you know, kind of just, you know, either flashbacks or there's, you know, a lot of um, overhead shots, a lot of, you know, intercutting of different things. And, and I really was feeling kind of that anticipation of like, okay, where's, where's this all going to hit? So is that kind of like what you were, you know, that that's what you were trying to go for is like, you know, it's a slow, maybe a slow burn, but when it hits, it hits. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that like, I neatly knew for this film, The Promised Land, um, I knew it was going to be a bit of a slow burn. It's, it's uh, as a filmmaker, it's a little scary because, you know, you go into it and you're like, oh man, am I going to lose the audience? Like in the first, you know, because, you know, audiences give you a certain amount of time. Right. And then they're like, because we're as filmmakers, we're, we're, we're competing for your eyeballs and your mind to, mm-hmm. to pay attention to us. Right. But in this day and age, you know, there's internet and there's fo- cell phones and others and and whatever and life for each individual. So I was really, I was a little nervous. I was like, oh man, you know, and I grappled with changing the structure at times in different ways. But I, I always, the initial idea was always that, that it was going to be a build as to what was, re- what was really happening here. And that was kind of what excited me about the idea. So I never wanted to I never wanted to verge from that or leave that. So I, I kind of like, that was such a big thing to me, but it was scary. Cause I was like, Oh man, you know, I, I, I I'm trying, I'm hoping I don't lose the audience, you know, and right. truth is that's, that's all we have as filmmakers is like, we, we just hope we're, we have a story we got to tell and we have to stick to it. But, you know, and I'm sure, uh, you know, big time filmmakers would say that too, that, you know, sometimes they probably make films and they're like, I just hope that, I didn't push it too far, you know, mm-hmm. where the audience gets bored or is like, okay, I'm done. You yeah. Know, you, don't, you always wonder how the, that test audience will hold up. And then you had to go from there, go back to that drawing board and, and adjust certain scenes or take certain things out. So yeah, it's always, I feel it's always that stress you have in the back of your mind, <laughs> but you know, as a filmmaker, we want to tell a story. We want to get that stuff out there. So what, what was like the inspiration for this? Where did your inspiration for the film come from? It's funny. I mean, I, 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 I'm a working cinematographer. That's my job. And I was driving home from a shoot and I drive a lot across the state of Texas all the mm-hmm. time. And I was just driving and it just kind of, I, I, the premise hit me, you know, I was, it was like a, what if, you know, what if this, ha- what if this person was with their kid in a car, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just went from there. So I, it kind of ranges for me. Sometimes I, I get a genre urge or whatever. This one was more kind of like playing with a what if scenario in my mind. And it sort of evolved into a bigger story and other things came out of it. and Why? And, and I workshopped it a lot with other filmmaker friends of mine and to develop the characters and to figure out like loose ends and where I might not have it. I mean, you know, like you said earlier, like about that slow burn, I, I really have always been drawn to sort of the temporal movie structure of like, you know, something's going on and they have to kind of figure it out in ASAP, you know, maybe not right. timed, but in a manner where time is of the essence, so to speak. I just, I, that I, uh, I don't, every film I make is that, but I like the idea of that sort of hanging over the head of the characters. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, it wasn't directly a movie or anything that I was like, Oh, I, I you know, I just um, I just thought of that premise and I was like, oh, that'd be interesting. I wonder how that would play out, you know? Yeah, I will say as I was watching this, you know, you talked about not wanting to lose the audience. And that would for me, I was engaged because it was like I was just trying to figure out the whole time, like, what's the dynamic of the relationship between, you know, these two women or what's the dynamic between, you know, like and, and it was like. The whole movie was just like, oh, we get a little bit, you know, revealed here. It's like peeling back the the layers of onions. And it's just like I kept being like, okay, but what's going on with this situation? What's going on with this person? Um, So I really enjoyed that. I appreciated that aspect of it because it was something that even though it was a slow burn, it was keeping me engaged um, as I went through it. So, you know, I wanted to to just say that, like, I I really enjoyed having that aspect of the film and and watching that. one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, 
as I got to the end of the movie, you know, obviously we're, we're not going to spoil anything, but what is it that you want people to take away from their experience watching this movie? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that like for me, I like, I, I like to feel strong emotions when I watch movies. Um, I, I, it doesn't mean I have, like, that's not like a prerequisite that I, 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 I watch movies that, a lot of movies that I that I enjoy that don't do that to me, but the ones that stick with me, I feel like kind of they they ask me to make a choice uh, in as far as like my emotions and and how much I cared. So in terms of like without spoiling, um, I, I mean I think that I want the viewer to sort of to you know to to feel what these characters are feeling and to and to uh, for those emotions to like wash over them in the way, whatever way they might have, because um, the, I, I, I think the film has this sort of gray area to it as to like the choices being made. And there mm. will be people that judge the choices being made in different ways. But I, you know, overall, I definitely like, I mean, a little bit of a tearjerker, um, you know, a little bit of a um, sort of like, you know, a sigh of relief kind of feeling, um, but the other side of the coin is honestly like any emotion, anything someone gets out of it's great. You know, even if, even if they were like, Oh, I wanted them to die or whatever thing they, they come away <laughs> <Right>. with. Um, <laughs> it, it's fine. I just, yeah. I mean, I just, I just, I mean, honestly, I, at the budget level I work at in the world I work at, I, to <clears> me, <throat> I just, I just, it's a win to me if the person's engaged and feels like they watched a complete story and felt like entertained honestly i mean it's funny because when i do screenings i prefer to screen for what quote unquote average people which is silly but um non-film industry people because i i really like to and, and i don't ask anything about like editing or things like that i just i i'm mostly about like did you care about the character were you invested in this story? Were you following this story? Was anything sort of confusing? Uh, and then finally, kind of like the overall, do, you know, what did you think the film was about for you? Because it's just like, you you know, I would watch one of your films, right? And and I might come away with it, with a, you, like, I might come with a reaction and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't intend that at all. But, and, right. you know, like, and there's nothing wrong with that because that's kind of cool. And it's like, I, I like that. I mean, I, I, I don't, so in a long winded way, uh, yeah, I just, you know, just emotions. I want people to feel, feel like they're, they're, um, invested in the people on, in this film and, and that they're either rooting against or for whatever is your uh, cup of tea. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's good though. Cause I mean, I think Robert nailed it. You know, I, he knows me. I have like squirrel brains at times <laughs> and I will say this, you had enough, like where the flashbacks would kick in and bring me back in. Every time it's like, okay, I'm gonna squirrel. Oh wait, no wait, there's something else now. Like now, what's this? Wait, now I'm invested again, and I I tend to do that. I have that squirrel brain at times that I will jump, but I'll jump right back in if you can recapture me. Interesting. Like, yeah. Um, I think me when we were watching The Exorcist, that was my problem. Is I was always just kind of like, okay, when is something gonna happen? <laughs> I'm bored now. Wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> have you seen that before? The Exorcist. That was, I think that was the first time I saw that one, right? Or no, maybe second but it would have been like decade a decade or two between but i was just not a okay. big fan yeah. of it uh the yeah. ending was cool but i was just like oh. <laughs> but i'm at the same time i've gotten yeah. to the point where it's like my kiddo love is starting to get into horror but it's also she notices all the like that's makeup that's cj she notices it she's only 12 but it's because i noticed it and when she was get young and get scared of it i'm like look baby it's just it's makeup uh, and i would teach funny. her and now she yeah. can pick it out and i'm like I don't know if I ruined horror for her, for her, but she still <laughs> likes watching it. Okay, cool. We're still good. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, again, we're talking about your film, and you know, I want to ask where can people watch it because I know you're having a premiere coming up. So when's the premiere date, time, and all that good stuff? Yeah. So, um, thankfully, we are premiering it at um, City Base Cinema, which I do. You guys have anywhere to drop a link or anything? Because um. Yeah. I have a, there's a portal on event. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm looking it up right now. Eventbrite, uh, dot com, which I can, I can send that over, but basically um, it's at city based cinema in Southeast uh, San Antonio. 
on January 15th at 1 p.m. Um, be there at, you know, hopefully a little bit before 1 p.m. The screening will start. And what's cool about it is um, it's a local film one. So it'd be great to have people come out and support. It's $15 per ticket, but that's, trust me, uh, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that we're asking for that to try to recoup some of it. But um, right. the most important thing is Destiny Soria, the star of the film, will be there. She's awesome. She's another local make, local filmmaker, and, mm-hmm. and she did an incredible job in this film. Um, the We, just on a side note to that, we taxed her like crazy. She in, I think, every scene or almost every scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a lot. Um, and so Eric Garcia, the little boy in the film, will be there. And... The other cast will be there. I'll be there. We're going to do a Q&A after. The theater's full concession stand will be open and ready. You can also, at three, you can go see another movie at the cinema-based theater. Um, <laughs> exactly. And But yeah, we're going to be screening that. And I also have a sneak peek at my my newest film. At the end, uh, we'll be sneak peeking a six-minute clip from that film. Nice. But, um, but yeah, it'll be a cool Q&A. You can ask any questions and... Or just give us your thoughts. You don't even have to have a question. Um, and it's going to be a ton. Like I said, January 15th, City-Based Cinema at 1 p.m. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I I know for myself, uh, I finished watching it and I had some questions. So I might have to, you know, uh, <laughs> come to the screening and ask you some of those questions. <laughs> I don't want to get into spoilers or spoiler questions. I can't ask you, them now. <laughs> so what's going to happen is if, you know, we're there oh, doing everything. Nice. Okay. We're going to do everything, and Robert's going to be like, no, all y'all sit back. I got a bunch of questions to ask. <laughs> Aaron, hold that line back, Aaron. That's right. <laughs> That's fine. So, that is totally fine. Uh, you know, we do thank you for your time. I'm, let's we go ahead it. and wrap it up. But I do have one question before, like, we finalize everything. What's, like, your go-to movie that you would you could watch every day? Man, uh... Every day, every like, day. I know once a month, once go. a week. Uh, it's like, I got to watch this. It's been a minute. <laughs> I'm always curious because I was so like, crazy. I mean, I. No, of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I would say I'm just going to give you something. So yeah, we're not waste your time. I'm going to say uh, Eternal Sign of the Spotless Mind. Yes. Uh, movie. <laughs> I um, love that film. The visual. <laughs> Yeah, the visuals, like the story. I, I, it's one of those movies that, um, <laughs> that it exists. It bothers me that it exists because it's <laughs> like, like, um, like he asked me. Uh, well, cause, like, you asked me earlier, what do you want to leave with? And it's like, what that movie leaves me with, I strive to do in every yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to feel. I would love to be able to make people feel the feeling you leave of that film. You know, it's just such an incredible, brilliant film. Um, and then the one. I just have to shout out, shout yeah. out, whatever. Um, is um, everything everywhere all at once this year? Yeah. Man. <laughs> that another movie great movie. Is, I I, oh. I I seriously think it's best film in the last maybe ten years, maybe more. I'm, I don't know every movie that's come out. I just yeah. again same thing. I left that movie. I kind of wanted to cry. I was questioning my existence. I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like that's that's what cinema should do. You know, it should it should. It should make you feel it doesn't have to change the world. It doesn't have to even say anything about certain things, but like, but it needs to talk about her humanity, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like whether it's love or pain or fear, like, and that's what those two movies I just <clears> mentioned, <throat> like to me, though, that's like my, I strive, you know, I pray that I could get there someday where like people walk out and feel that kind of like, well, Whoa. I think, you know, what's really interesting about the two movies you just mentioned is, even though there's like fantastical things going on in both movies, um, they're grounded in real people in real situations. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that stood out in watching no promised land as well, is that these are, these are people like this may not be a fact, a factual story, but this is a true story. This, this has happened. This story, the way that it, it played out this, these are real people, you know, displaying real things and, and navigating real situations. And and that's definitely something that stood out. So, um, you know, kudos to you. I, I enjoyed mm-hmm. the film. Um, I was very happy to get a chance to watch it. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to to come join and, and uh, be there at the premiere as well. 
But thanks again for for joining us. This was awesome. Um, you know, just kind of hear a little bit about you and a little bit about this film. Uh, and so again, uh, I think we'll have the link for people um, yep. January fifteenth. Again, make sure that you uh, get out there to uh, to support this local film. Um, this was a you know a really enjoyable experience for me, and so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Aaron, uh, you know, take it from here. You you got the close. You, you did my outro already, dude. I mean, you took my <laughs> outro away. Yes, everybody, make sure to check out the link below for this premiere city based san antonio texas january 15th at 1 p.m and of course stay around for the q and a you know enjoy everything support local filmmakers guys i mean we all need this help we all do this for the love of the film so please stay and you know talk with everybody there whether it's colin or the actors you know, just whoever i just beg y'all to stay please but on that note i'm aaron that's robert and that's colin thank you guys and stay geeky and well get your geek on guys